There were several thousand black people residing in Germany in 1933, the year Adolf Hitler and the Nazis rose to power. Because they believed that black people were racially inferior, the Nazi state discriminated against them. A handful of black individuals were also killed, sterilized, and subjected to harassment. This is the story of the brutal torture of a black child in the Nazi German concentration camp. The Afro-Germans were targeted by this regime in addition to the Jews and political prisoners. Nazis believe that Germans belong to the purportedly superior Aryan race and sought to establish a racially pure Germany. Non-Aryan Germans had their rights restricted by legislation imposed by Nazis. These rules were primarily meant to exclude Jews, but they also extended to black and Romani people. One such man was Gert Schramm, born on November 28th of 1928 in Erfurt, Thuringia's capital and biggest city. His parents were Marianne Schramm, a white German and a black American engineer, Jack Bronxen from San Francisco, who owned a steel business and had come to Thuringia as part of a contract to build a bridge. Gert Schramm was born during the period of Weimar Germany, where racism was a reality for black people. As a result, they had a hard time finding work, which was made worse by the Great Depression. Finding employment was also challenging for white German women who married black men since they were frequently shunned. Even within their own extended families, black people were occasionally marginalized. After the expiry of his contract, Jack Bronxen departed Germany, but continued to visit his son in Thuringia to putting his life at risk. However, Jack's last visit to Germany was tragic, as he was arrested by the Nazis and shipped to Auschwitz, where he supposedly died as a captive. When the Nazi regime came into action, it became a period of increasing discrimination, exclusion, and isolation for black Germans. Even though they had experienced discrimination under the Weimar Republic, black individuals and their families found their lives to be more difficult than unstable during the Nazi regime. As a result, black Germans considered the rise of Nazis as a historic turning point in their lives. People of non-Aryan descent were kicked out of the German Republic service under the law of for the restoration of the professional public service in April 1933. The definition of non-Aryan descent into the edict was not clear. Although it was clear that the purpose was to exclude Jews, later laws made it clear that this also extended to black and Romani people. Due to the fact that only citizens were eligible to work as government officials, this rule really had a minimal impact on black people as a majority of those black German citizens were still too young to work in civil service and the remaining few citizens were multiracial children born in Rhineland, where they had a challenging status in Weimar German society as a result of their mixed-race parents. Because of their fathers and the way that they looked, they were frequently the targets of discrimination. Some of these children remained with their birth mother, and others were placed into orphanages or adopted. The German news mentioned these black children as the Rhineland Bastards. This order and the ensuing racial prohibitations drastically constrained upcoming employment options and career paths. It was made quite obvious that the Germans did not see black people as German national community. Or at least the Nazis didn't. This concept was widely accepted in Germany, where black people were openly discriminated against. As a result, finding and keeping work became increasingly difficult for black people. Colleagues and superiors were hesitant to work with persons whose skin color distinguished them as outsiders in the Nazi racial society. Poverty, evictions, and firings were frequent. Some black people recall Nazi Germany as a place where they were occasionally spat on and called racist insults by other individuals. In September of 1935, the Nuremberg Race Laws, which incorporated Nazi views on race in law, were introduced in the Nazi administration. Jews were the main focus of these restrictions, but starting in November 1935, black and Romani people were also subject to the Nuremberg Laws, whom the dictatorship derisively referred to as gypsies, negroes, and their bastards. The Nuremberg Race Law came in two varieties. First, the Reich Citizenship Law stated that a person who is quote-unquote of German or related blood is considered to be a German citizen. The goal was to deny political rights in Germany to those whom the dictatorship deemed to be racially inferior, again including the Jews, Romanis, and black people. The law for the protection of German blood and German honor was the second. This rule prohibited what was referred to as race defilement or racial mingling. The act prohibited future interfaith unions and intercourse between Jews and anyone of German or related blood. A later amendment to the ordinance prohibited black Germans from being hitched to people of German or related blood. The intention was to stop black people from being married to Germans and having children with them. Even in Nazi Germany, it turned to places of degrading treatment for black students. Teachers who supported the Nazis frequently humiliated black students in racial science class and ridiculed them. Just as Nazification of the education system limited the privileges of Jewish children, it also had influence over black children. Unable to finish their studies, several black students were expelled. 
Such was the case of Gert Schramm. After finishing elementary school, he began working as an assistant at a vehicle repair business. He was a Mischling, or first grade, according to Nuremberg laws, and hence was not eligible for any apprenticeship. Gert was no exception to the Nazi law, as he was arrested by the Gestapo in May 1944. Under many jails, he was detained under protective custody. Before being sent to the concentration camp in Buchenwald, Gert was beaten, tormented, and interrogated inside these cells. The number 49489 was tattooed on his arm, and that identified him as a prisoner for the crime of being a mixed race. He was condemned to no less than 15 years in the camp, although his entire life of imprisonment remained unknown. Initially employed in a stone quarry, where up to 15 men ended up dying every day, Gert thereafter claimed that being transferred to a camp with simpler labor and a population of political prisoners saved his life. As a black man of the camp, Gert was afraid for his life, since even white men were slain without cause in the concentration camp. Gert, however, had more luck than the typical prisoner at Buchenwald because the Nazis spared him from the death marches. Ironically, the Nazis' decision to keep him in the camp helped him to survive the camp. During roll calls, the unhealthy or those who stood out risked being sent to an extermination camp or were killed on the spot. As the only black prisoner, he stood out after weeks in the stone quarry. He was in a weakened state. His block senior, Otto Gross, organized other inmates to surround him during roll calls in order to protect Gret. The Buchenwald camp was liberated in 1945. The camp prisoners using a secret shortwave transmitter and small generator sent a Morse code to the army of General Patton reaching out for help. At the arrival of General Patton, he ordered the citizens of Weimar to bring these citizens to witness the evidence of Nazi atrocities in order to ensure that the German people would take responsibility for Nazi crimes. Once the Nazis went down in World War II, Gert returned home, on foot, to his mother, and in, to continue his life while also helping to support her. He then worked at the Wismuth uranium mine and later shifted work to a coal mine in Essen. After relocating to East Germany, he eventually obtained employment at a bus business. So the next step for Gert was to further his studies by becoming a master mechanic. He eventually rose to the position of director of the vehicle fleet department. The pinnacle of Gert's success came in 1985, when he founded his own taxi company, Schramm Reisen with the help of another Buchenwald prisoner, Hermann Axen. He even got married and was a grandfather and a great-grandfather. As a member of the Prisoner's Advisory Board of Buchenwald Memorial Foundation, Gert visited schools to speak of the horrors of Buchenwald camps. Gert Schramm was 87 when he passed away from an illness on the 18th of April in 2016. He left for a message of peace and eradication of racial discrimination. He lived a complicated yet remarkable life his legacy and glory will live on through his family. Comment down your thoughts on the cruelties of the Nazi regime and the bravery of this black man in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching.